everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we go down to Pine Ridge, I have a special message for those of you who do the family shopping. Don't be misled by imitations which are offered you as a substitute for Horlicks malted milk at low prices. Such imitations are often extremely inferior products. Insist upon getting Horlicks, the original and genuine malted milk. In Horlicks, the rich, full cream milk, the fine wheat and malted barley are combined by the special Horlicks process, which conserves the valuable food elements, the minerals and vitamins, and which brings out the full flavor and aroma. By accepting a substitute, you can't get the real value of Horlicks. You may get just a mechanical mixture of merely skim milk powder, inferior malt, and ordinary sugar. So tell your druggist you want Horlicks, the malted milk that gives results. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Just as we left our friends in Pine Ridge Friday, the alarm was flashed over the party line that Lum's picture show, the Pine Ridge Planetarium, was on fire. Abner had just been trying to persuade Lum to take him back in as a partner in the show business. But Lum refused. So now Abner will not have to share the loss, if any. As we look in on the Jot'em Down store today, we find Grandpappy Spears over talking to Abner. There seems to be some mystery as to how the fire started. Listen. And if you won't mind oceans on it, Abner, somebody set fire to it. Oh, there ain't no doubt about that. It burned up too fast for it to be a natural fire. And I've got a pretty good idea who done it, too. Well, whilst I ain't calling no names, Abner, but I do believe I could lay my finger on the right man. Wouldn't have to go very far to do it, neither. Huh? Wait a minute here. You ain't accusing me of setting fire to it, Andy. No, no, Abner. No, the fella I've got in mind's been threatening to get even with you fellas ever since you beat him in that lawsuit. Who? Never mind. I've got my own ideas about it, though. You mean somebody that you can put your finger on and, and you sitting right there in that chair? No, no, I couldn't sit in here. It's just sort of an expression I was using, putting your fingers on a guilty man. Well, uh, putting your finger on him ain't going to do no good. You better put some handcuffs on him. Yeah, it ain't my place to find out who done it. You're the constable here in Pine Ridge. Well, now, if you know who done that, Grandpa, you've got to tell me who it was. That's your duty as a citizen of Pine Ridge. And yeah, if you weren't so blind, if you could see two feet in front of your nose, you'd know who it was without somebody telling you. Huh? Two feet? Wait a minute here. Hey, what's the matter with you? What you fixing to do there? Don't point that gun at me. I have to put that thing up. Grandpappy Spears, I arrest you in the name of the law for setting fire to the Pine Ridge Sanitarium. Abner, if you don't put that gun down, I'm going to whop you across the head with this chair. Oh, oh, he's this an officer, huh? And I'll put that in the charge, too. You mean to stand there and say I set that thing on fire and me working for lunch? I know that blame well you did. You just now said so yourself. I never done no such a thing. Well, you never noticed, but you let it slip. Just same as admitted to it. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason I called you over here. I thought I'd get a confession out of you. I've been watching you ever since last Friday, Grandpa. Come on, Abner. You've got less sense than any one man I've ever seen in my life. Come on. Get up from there. Don't argue with me. I slapped you in that jail before you set something else afire around here. Now, take your dad blame petty larceny hands off me, Abner Peabody, before I get up from here and beat some yeah, sense in yeah, your head. Yeah, yeah. What's the matter? What's going on in here? Oh, yeah. Howdy, Richard. How'd you come in? I've got him, Dick. I've got the fella done it. Got the fella done what? What are you talking about? All this you here, excuse me, is setting an picture show on fire. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Where'd you ever get an idea like that, Andrew? That's what I want to know. Uh, he admitted to it. I give him a third degree, but I cross examined him, and, and he made a confession before he knows it. I never done no such a thing. Well, now, know. wait a minute now. <laughs> Just calm yourself down a little. <laughs> there must be a misunderstanding here some guy. Well, I understood him. I know what he said. He said the fella that set fire to that building weren't two feet from the end of his nose. And it's bound to be him. I said if you could see two feet in front of your nose, you'd know who done it. 
Anybody with you pay attention could figure that out. Well, Dick, if he never done it, he knows who did and won't tell. I don't know if that's your thing. That blame you just been trying to get me on something ever since I've known you. Well, you ought to be got on something. You sit around here and try to protect fellers that set buildings on fire. That's what you try to do, and that's again the law. Your accomplishments to the crime. That's what you are when you do it. I ain't no such a thing. I said a while ago that I thought I know who done it. I ain't gonna come right out flat here and accuse somebody unless I know for sure it was him. If ever got back to Squire, he'd sue me for slander, just sure as a word. <laughs> well, I think nearly everybody here in town, Grand Pat, suspicions the same fellow. But, uh, of course, there's no way to prove it. <laughs> no, no. And if we had any kind of a constable around here at all, he'd find out who done it. Why, we've got one. I'm the constable here, Grand Pat. Yeah, I know it. Well, I know there's not much that Abner can do, though, Grand Pat, till there's some evidence found. Yeah, I don't believe he's even trying, Dick. See, him and Lum had a fallen out, and blame it don't look like he just glad it happened. Why, I ain't no such a thing. I feel sorry for him. Hate it the worst way. Only thing I'm glad of is that he never swapped back with me when I tried to get him to the other day. <laughs> you know, Dick, uh, Lum was over here at the store Friday when the fire broke out, and I, I just got done my, my begging him to... Swapping back at uh, his half interest, you know, in that picture show, back for a half interest in the store here, and he wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, I don't think Lum will lose anything, though, Abner. Why, he'll lose a whole bin if it burnt clean to the ground. I'm so glad he wouldn't trade back. I don't know what to do with myself, Harvey. <laughs> well, he's well protected with insurance. I imagine he had it covered for all it was worth. Huh? Oh, did he have insurance on the show, Richard? Well, I haven't seen him to talk with him, but I imagine he did. You know, he went by the insurance company to take out insurance on it the morning of the trial with Squire Skin. Yeah. That's how he found out that Squire had taken out a life insurance policy since he claimed to have been hurt when he fell over there in the picture show. Yeah, that's right. He did. Well, good. Good yeah. for long. I'm proud to hear it. I'd forgot about that. Well, 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 he collect some cash money from the insurance company now? Why, yes, I suppose so, Abner. How much? Well, it all depends on how much insurance he took out. I imagine he'll get all his work. You mean he'll get all that money all for himself? Yeah, and you won't get none of it, Smarty. It's good enough for you. I'm going to be running around here with more money than he knows what to do with, and you'll still be working down here at this little old store trying to make a living. Now, just take that, Grandpa. Just take that right up. Ain't a thing funny about it. Oh. So that's the reason he wouldn't pay back with me. I bound you, he knew that was going to happen. Just wanted all that money for himself. Selfish outfit. He might have set it on fire himself. I don't know. Why, Abner, you ought to be ashamed of yourself talking that way about love. You know good and well that he didn't do it. Well, I don't know, Dick. There's been a terrible, strange change come over long here lately. Well, Lum never had no chance to set it on fire, Abner, if he'd have been a mind to do it. He was sitting right here in the store talking to me and you whenever the fire broke out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, that's more likely the only reason he never done it, though, because we was sitting here watching. Well, now, Lum's not going to make anything on the fire, Abner. All he'll get back will be the amount of money he had invested over there. Yes. Why, sure. You see, the trustees of the old Cotton Warehouse Association own the building. We had a little insurance on it. <laughs> I guess most of them would be glad to get the money out of it. Yeah. Lama well, just get paid for the seats and the picture machine and stuff like that on the inside of the building. Huh? Yeah, sure. That's all he'll collect for. Well, Dad blames him anyway. Now, you just watch him. I bound you he'll be coming over here putting on a back air. I'm just a good mind not to let him come in here talking. He'll be trying to show off how rich he is. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon Lum will retire himself now. Just take life easy from here out. That's blame my luck anyway. It makes me so mad I don't know what to do with myself. Well, you ain't be grudging Lum getting all the money there you have, huh? Well, no, but it just makes me mad that they had to wait till I got out there before they had to fire. Well, it's too bad that it had to happen at all, but as long as it did, I'm glad that Lum had that insurance. Oh, yeah, sure. I wouldn't want to see him lose nothing either. Well, I swan to goodness. Look coming yonder. Oh, <laughs> for goodness. Now, what? Just coming over here to flash a bunch of money in my face and show out. Oh, I don't think Lum will feel that way about it, Edna. 
More likely just drop him by the loaf for a while. Why, sure. Well, I run him out of here the other day. Well, I never exactly run him out, but I told him I didn't want him hanging around here no more. Well, what's the matter with you and Lum, anyway? Just because you're not partners anymore, there's no reason for you to be quarreling all the time. Well, well howdy, Lum. Hello, Lum. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen. How do you do, Mr. Peabody? How do you do, sir? What is it for you? Huh? I say, what do you want? To buy something? No, I reckon not. I just... Hey, about... any new ideas about how your picture show caught on fire, Lum? No, no, nothing definite, Dick. Uh, got some suspicions, of course, but it's hard to tell about them things. Yeah, sure. All right, pull out your pocketbook, show us how much money you got. Do what? I say, go ahead, flash that roll of bills and show off, try to make us get you. What are you talking about? Well, now, we know what you come over here for, just to show off, brag about how much money you got from the insurance company. Uh, have you heard from the insurance company yet, Lum? Yeah, I was just looking for you, Dick. I wanted to show you a letter I got from them this morning. A letter? Yeah, see, I called them directly after the fire Friday and told them about the fire. Yeah. Here, here's what they say. Well, what's the matter, Lum? They're not refusing to pay it, are they? Well, read it and see what you make out of it. Dear Mr. Edwards, with reference to your telephone message advising us that your theater was destroyed by fire Friday night, we regret to inform you that... Uh, Although we have issued policies covering loss by windstorm and flood, public liability and property damage, our records fail to disclose that you purchased any protection against loss by fire to our agents. You, you mean that you didn't have any fire insurance loans? Yes, I reckon not. I'm going in there tomorrow and see them fellas. Surely must be a mistake there summer. If they ain't, a, they ain't a mistake, I'm... I'm right, Dick. I know that. And this is one time Lum won't have the Jotham Down store to fall back on. Ladies and gentlemen, here's an interesting letter from Mrs. Winifred Guidry of New Orleans, Louisiana. She writes about Horlick's tablets as follows. I keep a large jar of Horlick's malted milk tablets in my refrigerator all the time. And the children are privileged to enjoy a reasonable number of them at any time. We think he seldom come into our house. The children seem to prefer Horlick's tablets to anything else. They like them just as much as candy, and I'm only too glad for them to eat Horlick's. It's so wholesome and nourishing. So good for them. That's right, Mrs. Giddley. Horlick's is an excellent food for youngsters. And the youngsters certainly like Horlick's tablets. Mothers, you can get these tablets, you know, at your dealers in both natural and chocolate flavors. This is Carlton Bricker. Speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at this same time.